No. And I'll read that one instead. On May 4th, 1996, historian and Monaire founder Anthony Cohen embarked on a two-month-long journey to explore a tragically overlooked part of American history, the Underground Railroad, the secret network, which countless slaves traveled to attain their freedom. Cohen began his epic journey in Sandy Spring, Maryland, and traveled a distance of 1,200 miles to his final destination in Amherstburg, Ontario. Along the way, Cohen traced the steps of runaways on wilderness trails and waterways and the fugitive slave communities and Quaker sanctuaries. Following the success of his walk, Cohen embarked on an even more ambitious undertaking in 1998, following the footsteps of fugitives from Mobile, Alabama to Windsor, Ontario. Cohen's story has appeared in numerous radio and print sources and was also featured on Oprah. In 1997, using what he had learned about the Underground Railroad, Cohen helped train television icon Oprah Winfrey for her role as Sethi in the film Beloved. Blindfolded and dropped on a Maryland plantation, Oprah was transported back to the time of slavery, where for two days and nights, she lived as a fugitive along a simulated Underground Railroad. Cohen will help us today to relive some of those events here in this tent. Within recent years, Mr. Cohen has been engaged in providing invaluable historical interpretation and guidance for slavery at the Underground Railroad for many institutions, including Colonial Williamsburg and our own Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad Visitor Center. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Anthony Cohen. My publicist. Thank you, Kim. Um, Thank you all for coming out today. Is this a day or what? Yeah, or what? It's freezing. Um, so let me just give you a few housekeeping uh, tips. Um, if you haven't been into the visitor center yet, uh, there are toilet facilities there. It's the most important thing. If you need to go, just jump up and run. Um, and uh, we're gonna be in here for about an hour. Um, this was originally sp supposed to be a walking tour around the grounds for 50 people. That's blown out of the water. That's fine. <laughs> so we're going to convert it to a sitting tour in here. And um, it will be uh, more like a classroom uh, type thing. Um, with a twist because I will be calling on people to come up on stage with me to do things, which will be revealed momentarily. But uh, first of all, a little bit about me. My name is Tony Cohen, uh, other than what uh, Chris told you. Um, I am a historian of the Underground Railroad and uh, American slavery. And my work is really focused on uh, pulling uh, history um, uh, out of uh, 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 the textbooks and actually bringing it uh, to life. Um, and I do that by uh, going to the places where uh, history uh, took place and uh, seeing what's left there. Um, in 1996, come on in, have a seat. In 1996, I did make my first journey on the Underground Railroad by foot, boat, and rail, uh, traveling uh, through uh, seven states uh, uh, over a seven week period. And I walked 10 to 25 miles a day, stopped in the towns along the way and asked people what they knew about the Underground Railroad. And that's kind of led me to uh, the work uh, uh, that I'm doing. Um, uh, for, for this project, um, I was one of many players uh, uh, in uh, many teams. Uh, to uh, uh, bring bring this great center uh, 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 to existence, and um, uh, this has been such an incredible turnout this weekend, um, uh, and it's all because of you. So, could you give yourselves a round of applause? <laughs> Thanks for coming out. Um, all right. So, the Underground Railroad uh, was an organized system of escape. Um, uh, a loose uh, uh, to highly organized uh, network by which people uh, enslaved in the plantation south could get to a place of freedom. Uh, when I grew up, um, uh, the, 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 
depiction of the Underground Railroad was people uh, escaped slavery and they got to Pennsylvania. Um, and then Quaker people came out of their houses and helped them. And uh, the end. Oh, then the Civil War at the end. Um, and uh, over the past 20 years of uh, what was thought to have been um, a period of history you couldn't document because of its secret nature and uh, it was clandestine and all of that, um, we have since discovered there are voluminous records um, as people's private collections and universities have digitized their collections and they've gone online, we found the correspondence of the fugitive slaves themselves and the uh, people who helped them along the way. So a more vibrant uh, story has emerged in the past few years. Today, I'm gonna put some of the ephemera of the time uh, uh, into your hands. So, let's get this show started. Yeah, yeah, baby. All right. I need a volunteer. First, we're gonna go with the kids. I know you're a kid at heart, but I need I need some youngsters. Any youngsters in the audience? Any youngsters, say five or yes, come on up. Come on up, perfect. Excellent. Come on up here, sir. What's your name? Sule. Sule, what a great name. Thank you, Sule. All right, so we're gonna help people understand a little bit about slavery. So how old are you? Eight. You're eight years old, that's great. Where are you from? Maryland. What Laurel. Laurel, Maryland, okay, excellent, great. So how old do you think you had to be if you were living on a plantation during slavery times before they put you to work? I can't see. Uh, <laughs> Can you just take a guess? Make a <laughs> That's about right. Oh, wow. That's about right. Wow. Um, you maybe couldn't have done too much at two, except make a lot of noise and eat. But yes, as soon as you could walk and talk, uh, they would find a, a role for you. And one of the first things that happened. Uh, the, the littlest children on the plantation um, would uh, carry buckets of water to people working in the fields. Doesn't that sound like a good job? Is that easy? Okay. Well, we are going to test this out. Oh, no! <laughs> All right. Oh, my God! Oh, wow. said buckets of water. All right, Sule, uh, what I want you to do is stand right here, and I want you to lift the buckets in each hand. So, uh, yep, grab the ropes and lift. All right. See if you can lift them up like you're, you're pumping iron. What was that? That's kind of heavy. Kind of heavy. Yeah. Kind of heavy. Okay. So go ahead and put it down. Now, if you had to uh, uh, carry buckets like that, uh, let's say a long distance, do you think you'd be able to do it? Not really. Why not? They're heavy. They're heavy. Okay. So um, to make your life easier and to get more work out of you, they came up with all sorts of clever inventions back then. And one, which actually predates America and American slavery is something called a yoke. Do you have any idea what this is used for? Carrying water? Yes. 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 Yes, my friend. Carrying water. And we're going to do a demonstration. And who do you think is going to demonstrate using the yoke and carrying the water? Yes. Yes. Excellent. All right. So here we go.
All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to see if you can, uh, I think I already know the answer to this. You're not going to be able to lift these. So we're going to have to adjust this. See if you can lift it. Okay, hold on. Okay, this is not a scene from Pumping Iron, but we're going to give him a little hand here. And uh, if we can get a little clap going, maybe. It's Sule, right? Sule, 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 Sule. Now I want you to walk to me. See if you can walk to me. All right. He's doing it. He's doing it. He's going to make it. Excellent. Thank you, Sule, the water boy. Thank you. How did that feel? That was a little heavy, but better. And what have you had to do it for an entire hour? I can do it. And what have you had to do it for five entire hours, five times a week? I pass out. <laughs> All right, just something to keep in mind. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, carrying water was one of the first things a child would have been uh, required to do. Um, babysit other kids was one of the first things as well. Uh, Tubman actually did that for her siblings, was a child herself. Um, but was uh, put to uh, uh, attending uh, younger uh, kids. Um, and then there were more uh, uh, grisly jobs that slave children uh, were given. On tobacco farms, one of the first jobs was to send the kids down the rows of tobacco plants. And they were looking for a worm called a tobacco hornworm. It's about the size of a mozzarella stick and not so tasty, I'm sure. And um, so they would go down and they would pull them off. Mm. But they would camouflage themselves onto the plants. And so they were very hard to see. That's why it was a perfect job for kids, because they were at usually the plant height. So the kids would be sent down the row. And then the overseer would follow them and check the plants. And what do you think the punishment was if you missed a tobacco hornworm? No, they weren't going to whip anybody for that, but they make you eat the worm. Oh, oh no. Yeah, wow. so positive reinforcement. Here we go. Mm. All right. So, uh, could I get an adult volunteer? There we go. Yep, come on up. You were rip roaring to go before. Oh, okay. <laughs> come on up. Uh, what's your name? Mama Sandy. Mama Sandy. Okay. Mama Sandy sounds like a lot of wisdom. So you should be able to figure out some of this stuff. All right. We're just going to grab a random bag here. And I want you to reach in the bag and pull something out. Ah, great. Okay. So <laughs> what is it that you have in your hand? I have a broken down, torn up sideways shoe. You're right. okay. <laughs> Walked it for years. I was going to ask you to describe it, but you just did. Ah. Exactly. Okay. So the type of shoe you have is called a broken, um, and uh, it would have been a common uh, slave shoe. Uh, and uh, as I bring up volunteers and we interact, I'm going to throw some questions uh, to you. And uh, I'll try to give them in two parts or as yes or no questions, but um, the best way to answer 
is by applause. So if you think something is a right answer, applaud, um, and I'll give you the other one, and we'll just weigh and measure the applause and see what we think. So, um, uh, shoes like this would have been used for those who could afford them, planters who could afford them, uh, on their slaves, on farms and uh, plantations and stuff. But for the Underground Railroad, do we think more people escaped wearing shoes or more people escaped barefoot? Let's, okay, so wearing shoes, applaud. Barefoot, applaud. Okay, you all watch too much TV. I don't, I can't remember what they showed in Roots. Oh, what did they show in Roots? Jackals. Barefoot. Barefoot. And by the way, I'm going to put Chris on the spot. Chris Haley is the nephew of Alex Haley. Oh, wow. Yes. wow. So after the presentation, gang up on him. Okay. So um, actually, um, when people escaped, they were well prepared more often than not. Okay. People That's a good idea. traveled wearing shoes. Um, it was a rare occasion that you would escape uh, without shoes. However, the shoes look like this. So by the time you reach your destination, they might not have stayed on your feet. They would be falling apart as they went along. Yep. But um, they had to travel through all conditions. Now, to the barefoot contingent, the feet that we have here, uh, the ivory, downy, whatever soft uh, feet that you have, uh, that you put lotion and stuff on that, that didn't exist during those times. Uh, people's uh, feet were hard and full. And that's from having children uh, barefoot. Uh, you usually didn't get your uh, uh, first set of uh, shoes until you were an adult working uh, in a field. And so uh, people had rough palace uh, 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 feet uh, more often than not. Okay, what else is in here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Excellent. What's that? What do we have? This is a shirt. Excuse me. Excellent. Excellent. Long sleeve shirt. Hot summer. Yep. Long sleeves, hot summer. So is this the type of thing that we think of a, a slave, an enslaved person, on a farmer plantation would have been decked out in. Let's hear it for yes. And how many think no? All right. So, despite roots <laughs> and uh, slaves uh, coming off of ships from Africa, uh, scantily clad. Once you were on the farm, your clothing might not have been the highest quality, but you had clothing. Um, uh, this uh, is uh, cotton. Uh, uh, you would have been able to uh, uh, breathe uh, uh, fine in this, uh, even on a hot day. Uh, it would have uh, wicked a little bit of water from your uh, uh, body, but it's sturdy construction. The buttons were probably not here for slave clothing. Uh, this would have been uh, 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 open. Um, and there was a type of uh, shirt called a toe shirt. So it might have come down to your knees. It would have been like a, like a knight uh, uh, a shirt of, of, of old. And it would have gotten tucked into uh, uh, 